Okay. How are we all? Excellent. Sensational. Good. Good, good, good. I actually, um, I can't believe. So fast. I was just going to say, I can't believe how fast uh, Tuesday night has once again come around. Yep. And when you look back on the week and think, what, what's, what have you achieved or what's happened over the week? Um, yeah, there, it's been a lot in some areas. And there was Father's Day, of course. So I'm sure that was good and different this time around for everybody. Did everyone have a nice Father's Day? Yeah, good, thank you. I stayed in back. Beautiful. <laughs> Martin, have you got any kids? Uh, no, I just stayed in bed and practised. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> too much information. Sometimes it's just uh, too much information. Judging by what we saw last week, those kids might be far away. <laughs> <laughs> Did you realise that last week? What's that? <laughs> <laughs> just push on, push on. I'm absolutely not going to tell you. Oh, you swine. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just say that the background uh, on tonight I thought was on for a reason, but anyway. Right, no, you're you're right. There's a mirror in your, your back room, but I don't know. Oh, mate. I forgot. Leah. <laughs> Martin, that was better than uh, poor Rifkin's videos. That topped oh. everything. Oh, thank you. Well, I, hope, I, hope there was, I hope there was less on show. I'll try <laughs> harder then. <laughs> so have we all had a nice week? Yeah, I've just come back from a bike ride and for the first time ever, I've been pecked by a magpie. I've been swooped, but today was actually a peck and I, I thought someone had thrown a ball at my head and I turned around angry, you know, and then I saw this magpie flying off and I go, shit, and I, but I'm like, there's no tomorrow. So um, I've got a bleeding head, so I've whacked my head on. Just oh, to... no. I yeah, remember yeah, wearing a bike helmet. <laughs> yeah. With the, with the spikes <laughs> with the spikes out coming out with of it. With the bike cleaners. <laughs> That's it. But see, if you didn't have a haircut, you wouldn't have damage to your head. 100%. But I've, 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 been swooped. I've been swooped a few times, but this is the first time it's actually, um, you, you know, made impact. So... Uh, I was terrified to tell you. <laughs> I never screamed so much in my life. I scared. <laughs> I scared everyone else that was on the walk. You know. You know huh. what I mean? Like, people thought I was dying or something. You know, I was out of control. Anyway, could have been on the news. <laughs> Again. <laughs> All I've eclipsed you, mate. I don't know what to do. You know. <laughs> so, um, everyone got their jabs. Yeah. Yeah. I saw Jesse, you Probably got not. yours yesterday. Yeah, second one yesterday. Yep. Yeah, feeling, you feeling good? Yeah, not bad. I've actually feel okay. I got a little bit of a headache this afternoon that I'm putting down to it, but um, other than that, I'm fine. Not able to climb walls yet and nothing sticking to me, so yeah. <laughs> hey, Amanda. <laughs> Guys. G'day. I was actually feeling a bit, I needed another female presence. So I was like, <laughs> being overtaken by the testosterone. Yeah. The Brody bunch. <laughs> so I was, you know, uh, quite a personal um, subject I thought we would talk about. But I, um, I spent today in the city <clears throat> for the first time in, I reckon, four months. I had a, a doctor's appointment in there and um, one of the, the challenges that I've had over the years is um, varicose veins. And I know that it's a pretty serious condition that a lot of people in our industry suffer from. And I was just wondering if anyone else has had um, a problem with, with varicose veins and if you've actually done anything about it. I'm lucky. So no, none yet. Well, you, that's good. You're I'm, it's really lucky. I was unlucky. I've got really bad varicose veins. That's why I don't wear shorts anymore. Thank God for that. And I haven't done anything about it, especially I've got one massive one running down my leg. Um, don't be dirty, people, but it's just a really big vein. <laughs> and um, it's, it's, yeah, I haven't done anything. They don't hurt. 
but I do have really bad varicose veins. Yeah, I've had pain now for years with varicose veins and um, I finally did something about it about 18 months ago. I started having treatment and I didn't want to go into hospital and have the, the stripping done. I know that a lot of people have had that done, but I actually have the um, injections and I go in every six months and, um, and just keep touching it up with the surface veins, but it's been fantastic. And I have no pain now at all. They've, you can barely okay. see them. So it's um it's just been a great. I just thought I'd put it out there as a as an awareness piece because I do know that um, it is something that's that's quite common in our industry, given that everyone's on their legs for so long. Yeah, it's I've from been... concrete. Yeah. Two. Sorry, Jerry. You go. Yeah, I was just gonna say I've been lucky enough touch wood so far not to get them but um i've had a couple of staff members that had them pretty bad so it caused them a lot of pain and a lot of uh, discomfort so yeah mm. it's good to know that there's some pretty um evasive options available um so if anyone is watching this and they would like more information about how to get some treatment and it's re it's not real it's not that expensive to be honest like it's covered by medicare and you just pay a gap but it's um it's just been life changing i have to say it's been one of those things that i'm really really happy about fantastic I've, and, I've, I've actually had the surgery three times on veins varicose veins um the, the last time that I did get a lot of pain with them and, and that's why I went for the third time and had, had the veins done. Um, they do keep coming back, but there were some other issues that I had to deal with as well. Um, and all I can say is just wear the support stockings. They're the greatest help. They, they, they really are. Um, you look like uh, one of the old Greek mummers. <laughs> But you can get the flesh coloured ones, the the black knee high ones. Yeah, just wear the support stockings. They're the best, best, best remedy. Yeah, they're not the most fashionable lingerie. I've actually got them on for the next four days, but um, but they do give a lot of support, which is good. So anyway, I just thought we would I would put that out there and share something a little bit personal, but something that has really been a bit life changing. I have to say over the um the last. 18 months. So it looks like we may be having a spring carnival after all, Jezza. Yeah. I'm still not sure what context the focus on our exemptions are around Everest and Golden Eagle, the two big days, but um, what they look like, we're not sure. We've, we've submitted about five different plans, you know, one to two, one to four. You know, owners and trainers, owners, trainers and members, corporate. So there's, there's lots moving around. The big question of, um, you know, vaccination, unvaccinated, who needs to be, all that sort of stuff. So we're directed a lot by race in New South Wales. So I suppose once Gladys um, clarifies <laughs> the road a little bit more, we would understand what's needed to be managed around patrons coming on site. We're definitely pushing for all our staff to be vaccinated not yet mandated, but once again, I think race in New South Wales will have a big influence on uh, where the company goes with that. Yeah, it's pretty exciting. And um, Amanda's just shared October 14 is Sydney's Freedom Day as New South Wales lockdowns um, look to start easing restrictions. That's pretty exciting. That's when we hit the 70% rate. Yeah. Will that be the, will that be the hot spots as well? Or? well that, that's I mean, the no. That's the magic question, Sam. Uh, if, they, if the cases are still big, there, they're going to be opening up half of Sydney and the other half still going to be in lockdown. You know, it's, yeah. I just think it's promising that there's been a date. Like, we've all been throwing dates in the air and we don't know anything beyond, you know, my kindergarten kid going back to school on the 25th of October, bring it on. But this is the first time that I've seen a date. Um, last night on the news, there was... Um, like they'd said that, you know, things will reopen at 70%, et cetera. Um, but this is the first time I've seen a date. So obviously I'm hanging on to, I'm hanging on to that date as a, as a goal for reopening. Well, if they don't really? unlock me, if they don't unlock me, I've got a house in Ashfield that's vacant. I'm moving the family there. No lies. I'll get us all <laughs> vaccinated and all that. And I'll just move in there. Can't do it anymore. You know what I mean? That's my, that's, that's what I'll do. You know, I'll just move, back. I'll just move to the inner, inner, inner west. 
yeah, I know think, lockers went up and just get out of it. A lot of people wanted to change their address on Services New South Wales, so they've stopped that feature on, on the <laughs> website. But I'm, I'm fully with Amanda. I think, uh, you know, it's not fully confirmed yet, but we've got a date set in stone. Uh, people have been going to get vaccinated. We need a reward rather than going to a picnic with buddy five people or something at a park. I mean, uh, hospitality well needs a, a sign out of this. And a lot of us are doing the right thing by getting vaccinated and, and uh, you know, hospitality, you know, it's another five weeks away. It's still a tough time and many won't survive mm -hmm. that. So uh, at least, um, you know, there's some promise at the end. And Amanda, look forward to coming to your place uh, on the 16th. Let me know when you open up booking. Yes, I can't <laughs> wait to get there myself. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing the shift in attitude that with, with people just to have a date. Yeah, exactly. So it's it's yeah, it's it's gone from a negative to a, to a positive. Like when you're talking to people, it's good. So, but yeah. I mean, we have had dates before, right? We've had the 28th yeah. of August and stuff. So, I guess you know you can't we can't literally put all our eggs in the 14th basket. But I reckon we can put half. Yeah, we can put half our eggs in that basket and keep half in the air. And, it, I, and I it's four it's weeks there. away. So it's while well, while well, the 14th of, of October is great, it's still four weeks away. And there's there's um enough room there for people to go out and do the right thing and see see what's actually happening between now and then. So I think it's Boop. great. I think it's good. Boop, half the eggs in the air and half half the eggs in the southwest block. <laughs> yeah. I no, think I'm serious. I swear I, I will get vaccinated the whole family. Or move into astral. I don't care. You know, you get the tests and everything. I'm out of it. You know, I'm not. If if they open up the whole of the city, and we're still stuck in lockdown, that's it. I'm done. I lock the I joint think, up. I think that that's, that's the issue. It, it's sort of dividing the city. And you know, if you heard today, yeah. Black, Blacktown is. Um, you know, the, one of the highest rates of vaccination, Blacktown, and I think another adjoining suburb and, and where you are, Berkey, is really, really high. So these suburbs that have yeah. got the cases, they're going out and getting the jabs as well. So apparently there might be a trial later in September on the North Shore. Um, I don't know how good that'll look politically, but that's sort of a high vaccination area. So um, these areas out west and that, we, we've got to remember them and they're, they're doing the right thing. I mean, Blacktown is, is crazy with their vaccination rates. So, 86%, so. wasn't it, today? Yeah, it's, I think it's one of the best. It is the best, yeah. so, yeah. Mm. And that puts pressure on them that they're going to have to do something positive for them areas. So, you know, you want that to maintain, yeah. If, if they, they do... Get, uh, they, the, they, did that, they did that at Christmas last year to the poor people in North Shore. You know, Northern yeah. Beaches, mate. Yeah, yeah Northern that, Beaches. That was, that was it's right. not, two two weeks of Christmas lockdown. Oh, I don't care. I call it the way I call it, you know, you know. One out all well, out. Tommy, I have to say though, like it really is a tale of two cities. And yeah. great book about Irish history called The Tale of Two Cities. But I went down to Canola on Father's Day just to get a walk to, you know, stretch my legs and stuff. And it was like what COVID. It was embarrassing. Like I was really actually, oh, I was embarrassed. Uh, yeah. masks were on every fourth person. People were sitting down, the beach was packed, everybody was in the surf, the walkway, like there was no social distancing. Mate, was, mate I can't even way. go for a bike ride anymore. It's either get locked up for going outside your five days or get smashed by magpies, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Dangerous area. Uh, <laughs> and um, um, it, it'll be interesting worst to place. see. It'll be interesting to see, you know, you talk about um, masks and so forth. I mean, we're supposed to have a 29-degree day on Saturday. Yeah. So... You know, it'll be interesting to see what happens um, with with people out and about. I mean, there were a lot more people out and about today, just even in our area, um, and even in groups, which was surprising. The city was dead. The city was dead. Yeah. yeah. Probably just my staff running around in the city. I think there's nothing else going on. <laughs> it was actually shocking. I mean, I had to go to, like, World Square and uh, that's where I parked. And normally you're struggling to get a park. So I normally go in the car wash. But there was um, like, there was no hustle and bustle. I, it was the first time, as I said, that I've been in there. And you kind of just go, oh, this is just bizarre. Yeah. Parking for $10 in the city. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Be nice if that's $10. Hey, free. Yeah. I, I had to book in for an appointment in Macquarie Street today. And you normally if you go to see a specialist or something you know it's like three four five months away and they were saying which which postcode are you in and i said double two oh seven they said oh maybe two three four weeks away and i said oh i've actually got to go into the city on a wednesday 
She said, oh, what time would you like the appointment? I said, oh, which Wednesday? She said, do you want tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It just so goes to show that everybody's feeling it, right? Even the like specialists that you would never really consider. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So no one's in, in the city, no one's going, because I suppose a lot of people going to specialists in the city would be working in the city and, you know, those appointments would be booked out, but I could get in tomorrow, tomorrow afternoon or next Wednesday, I could have any time I wanted. Wow. Mm. wow. Unbelievable. So changing the conversation slightly, we're looking at, you know, looking at that recovery um, phase and, and the reopening. I had a, um, I had an interesting um, situation today where I went through McDonald's drive through right? And I don't mind calling it out. And the girl that served me on the drive through as I collected my stuff, she goes, oh, you've got, you know, the frozen Coke. Thanks, babe. <laughs> I'm like... <laughs> and I'm just like, really? Like, this is their head office. And... I was just kind of like, what? You just called me babe? I thought, how do you guys feel about it? And where do you see customer service going in the future? Well, on the flip side, I ring Adam, and nine times out of ten, I'll catch him in the drive through at Macca's. <laughs> right? oh, and and oh, they, nothing wrong with that. Chef Adam. They call him Chef Adam. Right. <laughs> so the ones at Penrith, Chef Adam, you know? Is that right, yeah, Adam? Sam, Sam, learn some respect and learn like young people do. No. <laughs> no look, hey, just, just to be fair on that one, Sam, the McDonald's I go to is the only one on the way and everyone knows me because I've been going there for a long time and uh, I have the same order. I'm pretty boring, but, yes, I do go to that one. Flight cone, cone in the in the fourth sweetener in the cappuccino. Uh, I don't give your secrets out. Do not give my secrets out, okay? Uh, uh -huh. I can tell you some secrets that you have, like the shoe fetish. That you have, so just I'm saying. not, Adam. That's not a, that's not a secret. Turkey's <laughs> skin fetish is no, not. That's a true. That's true. It's not a secret. I must say, there's, 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 there's more shoes in Night Town behind me. You know? <laughs> Where's the volleys today? <laughs> I must say, me and, me and Berkey have hit up a uh, a, a, a few McDonald's uh, doing some master classes traveling around Australia. But my yeah. next question is to Adam Moore. Adam, what's the order? I, I want to know. What's what's your go to? Standard. Uh, well, coming from the company that used to make the coffee for McDonald's, so. We're having a bit of pride factor. I do enjoy my coffee. It's a standard large cappuccino with skim milk and three equal in every time. Isn't it right, Sam? And the flight cone. Yeah. Don't forget the flight oh. cone. You, Sam, I'm on a diet at the moment. Can you shut up? I'm not talking about my secrets. <laughs> oh, oh. Only one flight cone. Really because hey, this, this is not going out. This is not customer service, and I agree with Vanessa. Customer <laughs> yeah, service is on the way out. I think it's an intervention, Adam. <laughs> so because this is going out Facebook Live, Adam, is, are we aiming at a Macca's deal here? <laughs> <laughs> I think we need to go in and do some training. I was just like, she did not just call me babe. I, you know, I, I don't. I actually don't find any exception with that at all. I actually, I, I actually think customer service needs to be a lot friendlier than it's been in a long time. Yes, there's there's time for sir and ma'am and all the rest of it, but what's wrong with just treating people nice? I, I'm uh, not sure babe's the right word, though, to be honest. I just don't think that babes are quite... I'm a 50-year-old woman, and ah, I've got a 17-year-old a a 17 17 calling me babe. It was just like an oh-my-God moment. <laughs> Take it as a compliment. Take it as a compliment. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I just I, I must, it was funny. I must say, in terms of hospitality and service, I'm, I'm sort of a bit... Um, you know, wary in terms of, you know, uh, a lot of the staff going to have to check the Services New South Wales app and see if the person's vaccinated, see where they're from to let them into certain locations. So it's going to be a bit of a tricky time for, for certain hospitality venues because they're going to be, uh, you know, the front of house staff going to have to be checking if you're vaccinated to let you in. So it's going to be a bit of a tricky time for reopening, I think. 
I think will be, hopefully be, they're going to merge it, right? Bitches. The new door bitches will be checking the, the, the service apps, not the not you know your ID going into a nightclub or a pub or something. There'll be there'll be people checking, and people will try and get around it. And there's there's going to be that um, confrontational point, I think, at the, right. at the, in the restaurant. So well, it, won't, it won't let you check in. Sorry, it won't let, it won't let you no check in. List anymore. It's COVID list, COVID check off list. Yeah, yeah guess people, this, people, you know? people, who's going to stop you at the door if you can't check in? Same people well, that stop you we, 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 we've, had it up here. Yeah. We, we've had it up here where, where you've literally, I mean, I stand on the door at our place and, you know, everybody, like, sign the app, do the app, check it, unless mm. I hear a ping. And I have turned people away. And anybody that's re refused to sign in, well, go somewhere else, mate. You know? Yeah, yeah, I mean, what, you know, it's, it's just a case of, those are the new rules that we've got to live by. We had a, where everybody had to walk around with masks. And we had a couple of guys front up at the restaurant, no masks, and we're no masks, no service. You know? Oh, yeah, I get, I get all of that and I understand that. But do you really think that there's going to be, um, what, what sort of person's going to be at the front of your restaurant or your, your food outlet checking those apps and be able to deal with people that don't have, don't have the, the correct check-in? Well, there's not right. much difference to that and, and RSA. Like, you still have to have yeah. confrontation if somebody has over-consumed. I think the worry would be more like a lot of places probably won't be able to afford to, and probably won't have the staff potentially, but as part okay. of a restaurant COVID safety plan, <gasps> you, have to have, you have to have a marshal. So if you are unable or not right. equipped to have a person at your front door, then your doors need to remain shut, really, because it's part of the COVID safety plan. And we had incredible systems in my businesses and we were like we had the police would come in and check often that we were compliant and we always were incredibly compliant so i think it just is if you're not if you're not able or you're not comfortable with the confrontation then you should stay shut until something else happens but if you want to open your business i think all of us that do will do whatever it takes to get oh get exactly, in. exactly. Uh, and, al and also and it happened again up here with we ended up bubbling the ones that weren't playing by the rules because we were the ones that were shut down and losing money. And the guys that were taking the piss, well, everybody was ringing up public health and going, hey, guys, you know, why have we got to do this? So yeah, this idiot's breaking the rules. Yeah. I think it'll be fine. People want to get back out, and that's just the way that it is. It's been plastered over TV while we've all been stuck at home watching it. If you want to go out, that's what you have to do, just like you have to – Catch a cab if you want to drink, then you can't drive. Like it's just going to be part of being an adult, I suppose, a responsible human being, just like getting a jab. Uh, yeah, but I right. agree. And there's big fines for people who don't do it, and there's massive fines for businesses. So yeah. you're going to have to <clears> call, otherwise, don't open. And I'm pretty sure that most venues will opt to maybe, um, you know, put an extra cost of a marshal, which is required anyway, as part of a COVID safe plan on the front door. So it is actually mandatory to have only vaccinated it's going to be only it's going to be mandatory is it to no, only yeah. have hopefully but um but i think that's what it's going to be so the plan sort of says uh it'll be only vac fully vaccinated people up two weeks that'll be allowed into these venues so, and if you're worried uh and you you can stay at home um, we need to open up that's i thing. just find it interesting that we're talking about this being the 16th of october then we have, and I, Paul, I don't know what it's like where you are or Martin, where you are, but my daughter's on the Central Coast. She works at Services New South Wales and has not been able to get a vaccination um, because there has been zero Pfizer available. So I, I don't know, how is it like that up where you are, Paul, where people are struggling to actually get the vaccination? It's like no, everywhere it's, to jump it's in. Quite, on. It's quite high up here. You the vaccination, mate. Like, my, sorry to jump in. One of my employ, like one of our staff in Melbourne, he had a booking and I challenged him to find a sooner one before this weekend. And he lost his booking in the process. But if you, I think if you really, and like, I don't want to sound awful, but if you're really, really trying to get a vax, then you'll be able to find one. Like I found two places today that have a walk-in clinic that, you know, you can, you can go to, um, like Campbelltown Catholic Club are doing it and they're popping up with Pfizer dates often, um, I Sydney, think if you really, Sydney, really are yeah. invested, you can find it. Sydney, can... Sydney is not a problem. And I've actually got them coming down and, do, and going to Unilever, which is just an amazing hub. 
but there's people in Newcastle that I know and and as I said and my daughter who ended up getting the AstraZeneca so she, she's fine now but there's friends of mine that live further north that haven't been able to get the Pfizer at all that are coming to Sydney to get it but you can't get it here Vanessa I only got it because I lied I my first booking is not till next Tuesday because of the eligibility and I booked in the next Tuesdays last in June. Yeah, this is this is 50 year olds and I think that that's a bit easier than yeah. the younger age group. But yeah, so awesome. they're coming to Sydney and thank God for Unilever um, and being able to get an appointment because these are frontline workers that haven't been able to get Pfizer. It's terrible. I lied as well and went to Wollongong. <laughs> what did you why did you have to lie i had to say i was a support worker um you are mate you are but you uh, are support, <laughs> no i support worker for um my wife does um out and stuff so i just yeah i booked through a, a health company that for healthcare workers and said i was a support worker so had a nice drive down to wollongong yesterday for my second one but uh, it's done because um, like Amanda, my, my booking, the booking that I made for Pfizer, it was in October the 24th, I think was the closest I could get. <coughs> so I cancelled that yesterday, so. Um, but, but, but on a serious point, if anyone in hospitality or any essential worker on this call or uh, anyone, you know, Amanda, any of your staff, um, Vanessa, please forward the email to them. You can walk up to Unilever at North Rocks. Uh, it's near Parramatta. Come and get your Pfizer. You can literally walk in. Or we prefer you book, um, but come in. We've got another five weeks or four weeks of Pfizer available there for any essential worker yeah. amazing and, and there's so many of like there's so many appointments available i went on there myself because i just wanted to check it out to see that i could give these people the right information and um like you you'd get it today if you had if they had wanted to drive down today but anyway they've booked in so um good work unilever it's i think it's just incredible what you guys have done mm. hey andrew just while we're on this on this topic so if my daughter got the first jab four weeks ago at the hub, could she come down and get the second jab at Unilever or does she have to go back to the same venue where she got the first jab? Mate, if you've had your first Pfizer, you can come and get your second Pfizer at Unilever and you should be guided by your doctors, but I think it's three weeks in between jabs. 21 right. days. 21 days there, Amanda. I might book her in for the second one and pick up a Magnum while I'm there. Mate, no, you get a whole box of ice creams, mate, and some sanitizers. So it's not good. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> it's just my bloody ice cream. Ah! Mate. Mate, four, four <laughs> kids, guys. Sam will go out there with the three kids in tow <laughs> and the dog. Vanessa, <laughs> 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 I mean, just, just to put a serious note on it, too. You know, I know we're talking about Pfizer and, and that, and I was privileged at Pfizer. My wife had AstraZeneca. You know, there is nothing wrong with AstraZeneca. It's been verified as well. Yes, our government didn't really do a great job with it, but there is a choice, and Moderna or Moderna, whatever it's called, is coming out soon. There, you know, if people are just hanging out for one, I, I would just say get if you get an opportunity to get vaccinated, go and get vaccinated mm -hmm. regardless. You know, you've had over 2 billion people get AstraZeneca in the world uh, and a very small percentage, and it's a very rare disease. And there's also, um, you know, issues with Pfizer and Moderna as well. So we just, if you get a choice and you get a chance to get vaccinated, just get vaccinated because the unfortunately it's mutating again. And I'm just going to put the voice of reason. If you can get it anywhere, get it out there. Yeah. If, if you're, mm -hmm. it's your choice. But you go for it, but it is converting right now. So, is, and it's pretty easily accessible up at your way, Paul? Yeah, the, there's between doctors' surgeries and pharmacies and things like that. But, you know, they're still in lockdown up here, but, you know, it might change on Friday. Everyone's crossing their fingers. Yeah, well, yeah. And the, and the, the, the rates are quite high up here. And the, the same up here, Vanessa. I mean, if you're in the if you're in the in the city, as it were, or in in the bigger conurbations, then it's not a problem at all. The biggest problem we've got is the remoteness of summer community, mm. you know, to get those um, jabbed. But uh, it, like general day to day workers, not a problem at all, you know. But if if you're if you're a million miles away in Whoop Whoop, then yes, it's a little bit more difficult. 
but it's not that difficult. I mean, the guys who I was talking to our CHO the other, on Monday night last week, you know, saying how are you going on, whatever, because, you know, like our, our wellness goes to our group, but it's also the guys that are really being awake for three, four, five days at a time, stressing about everything that's going on, i.e. the CHOs and the or general leaders and what have you. And I was literally asking him, you know, what do you reckon, Zeneca or Pfizer? He went, you know what, exactly like Adam says, just get the jab. You know, it, it, the, the, the differential is minutia. You know, absolute minutia. And if you've got the opportunity of getting one or the other, get the bloody double tap and have done with it. I, I, agree. I must say, I just want to jump in. I was, and this is why there's hesitancy. I've got a, a message from Craig Kelly, you know, which has been going around just oh, then. Yeah. Three Australian government COVID nineteen vaccines adverse events report. Click link authorized by Craig Kelly. Um, you know, these people have got blood on their hands. These absolute yeah. group loops. It's, yeah. it's shit, shit to bring politics into this, but this is a joke, you know. <laughs> totally agree. So back to customer service. <laughs> No. <laughs> I love the segue there, Rifkin. <laughs> so, so on, I was watching an old Seinfeld last night and the, the bank was handing out $100 to anybody who wasn't greeted with hello when they went into the bank. And uh, Kramer goes into the bank and the person doesn't say hello. They say, you know, how do you do? And the next person says, you know, g'day. And the next person says, how are you going? And everybody's got a different thing. And then he goes to the bank manager and he says, but, but they didn't they didn't say hello. No one said hello. So then they the bank manager goes, oh well, I'll, I'll just I'll have a meeting with the staff. And so they come back to the staff, and then everyone's basically said what they said. And he goes, well, it's, they still said hello. So how about if I give just give you twenty dollars? And he kind of takes it and walks out. But the point is that I mean I go into a lot of clubs and see a lot of people over the last few years, and there's the greetings you're getting from yeah young people who are saying to an old person, doll and babe and sweetheart. And I mean, all of these things and the person on the till and the, across the bar and everywhere. And, and I get annoyed because I don't think it's respectful, but you know, the more I, the more I think about it, the more I think, well, what's the, what is customer service? And is it, is it the, just a nice greeting, making a customer feel, feel good? Like Martin said. Well, what uh, I think it is. To- to me, I'd, to me, I'd, I'd, I'd class customer service as being not on your bloody mobile phone, having a smile on your face <laughs> when somebody walks through the door yes. and being greeted. You know, yeah. it, it's like it, the simple ABCs of it, you know, the semantics of the wording, you know, um, maybe, Vanessa, you're right, you know, babe, but you, you are a bit of a, you are a babe. You know, in, <laughs> so in, 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 all, in all honesty, but, you know, I, I think the, the simple, you know, don't walk into a venue and have your front house people there playing about on the bloody mobile phone. Or, I totally or, agree. Or the, standard, the standard greeting back in the 90s, hello, darling. Hello, darling. <laughs> Absolutely. Hello, darling. Customer service should be about customer. Hello, darling. (laughs) (laughs) There you go, Sammy. Customer service should not be an inconvenience. That's the thing. I think that's the point now. It's becoming an inconvenience for a lot of people. And it's harder now when we've got masks, you can't really see people smile. But even just saying, you know, hello or welcome, you feel you feel part of the team. And if it's an inconvenience, uh, like being on their mobile phone, or and you do see different workers, and they, and you go up and they're like, oh, what do you want? You 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 automatically go, oh, I'm disjointed with the, the customer service already. But yes, I think the younger generation, and I'm not going to sound old here, but you know, the younger generation, they also oh, things like manner. Yeah, I know, but uh, please and thank you. You know, like I know that's uh, I know that's the era that I was brought up in, but you know, hearing kids today, they just take and it's like, no, please or thank you. There is, there's got to be society's got to hold that that mantra, you know. And what what does customer service mean to everyone? Hospitality is customer service, and it should be greeted. But there's, you know, what's happening is. We've got a whole generation of people that are not doing the same thing. 
the what the one that gets me is when you walk in and they go, "How you, how's your day going?" And half an hour later, when I finished telling what a shit day I've had, they sort of walked away <laughs> and like, we've got a glazed look. In it. <laughs> <laughs> I always got taught don't ask someone how they are because they might tell you yeah <laughs> that's true but I just thought it was interesting you know given that and, and look I, I have no problem with the you know hello how are you I don't expect to be called ma'am or I, I don't like that I think that that's uncomfortable and, mm. it's, and it's unfriendly but I do think that you know when you're when you're looking at a business like McDonald's, which is training a lot of the workers that potentially end up in our industry, and this is their head office, I just found it interesting that um, it would be acceptable to call a customer babe. <laughs> we, we spent just before COVID lockdown, we've got a, a thing going on at work at a minute called Project Bold, and it's all about the welcome, the hello, the goodbye, customer service, you know, uh, grooming standards and stuff. And it's, you know, we've done a lot of training sessions with our casual pool on the expectation of, you know, uh, the narrative around welcoming people, some, somebody at the gate is welcoming somebody into a restaurant, just saying hello to somebody and welcoming them at a, a service cell or a coffee shop. Uh, yeah, but I think, you know, it's, it's taken a long time, a lot of training modules and stuff like that to get people up to speed and to set that standard. Um, it's still not perfect, but it's definitely improving and it's really pushing the education piece to the younger uh, people that were that were hiring and using the older people to mentor them while they're in, when, when they're in the service line. Another good book if you want to read on, on customer service, if anybody's ever read it, it's called Be Our Guest at Disneyland Story. Mm, and, that's and great. How they, how, they mentor and yeah, how they mentor and train their people to live Disney when they're in Disney. It's amazing. So, yeah, yeah. What is that? It's a custom, like a customer it's, service it's, it's book. It's a story of how Disney instill customer service and the Disney experience into their staff and the whole Disney model for people in Disney. It's amazing. It's called Be Our Guest. If you ever yeah. get it or read it, it's got some really good. You think, you think it's like, you know, we, we want to walk into venues and restaurants and shops and whatever and be greeted as if they actually mean it, you know? I mean, I think that that's the main criteria, isn't it? You just want to, if somebody's going to ask you a question, ask it ask it like it's meant, not yeah. that it's a, a recited, okay, this is number one. On, it's like ringing, ringing up and getting one of these um, international call centres and there's like item one, item two, item three, item four. You don't want this robotic thing. You, you want to deal with humans, mm. you know? It's, you know, uh, you know, um, you know. I was just going to say, Amanda does that same thing. Amanda's team. If you walk into any of her venues, you feel greeted. You feel a part um, of the team. Yeah. And it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what you're doing. They stop and they greet you. And all the, all Amanda's venues. Not saying it's just Amanda. It's the, the team. And even you know the chefs as you walk past the kitchen, you feel greeted. It just feels so different. Yeah. I actually can honestly say, hand on heart, that I have had minimal bad experiences with customer service within our food service industry. I, I really mean that. You know, it, it does. I mean, I used to do a lot of traveling for work and it didn't matter if I was traveling all over Australia, the housekeepers, everyone, it would always be, hello, is there anything we can do for you? I, I, and I think that that may be why it stood out today is because I actually haven't experienced it for such a long time. I agree. I agree completely. And I think that there's so many good restaurants in Sydney that, you know, that the food is really, really good. So the customer service is actually what the people are really looking for. So their waiters, the front of house stuff, how they're greeted, uh, how they get the fuel and all that. That's the most important part that actually can set these restaurants apart from the others because the food is so good in Sydney and Melbourne and, and other states as well that this is what sets them apart. So for me, I travel around Australia and the world or previous before COVID and, yeah, I, I generally have amazing experiences in hotels, in food service, in restaurants um, of all levels um, and I don't mind Maccas as well. Um, I'll, I'll, give you, I'll give a shout out to Brooklyn's Pizzeria at Guildford. Um, I haven't been to him for a while, a uh, good guy down there, Anthony Rami. And I walked in there on Friday night because we were building a trampoline. And it was like, oh, mate, it was like constructing 
a Lego castle, you know, it was just all over the joint. So we weren't going to cook that night. So I went in and saw Anthony and I hadn't been there for a while because usually we make our own. And um, and he goes, oh, so good to see you, Chef. It's been a while. When I came back, uh, we opened up and I, I realised there was one extra pizza there. There was a garlic pizza there. And inside there was a little card, appreciate your patronage. Thanks oh, for that's so nice. So, you know, that's the kind of stuff that you're seeing out there from small business around the area and you know i'm not going to make pizzas so i'm going to just go down there and support him again because not because we can't make it because i actually we actually enjoy doing a lot of cooking at home but uh you know it's just the service that we got that of, of that uh guy so shout out to brooklyn's pizzeria on guilford road in guilford anthony and the family they're fantastic That's so nice such a small gesture leaves an imprint yeah. we've been trying yeah. to write on our bags as well when when time permits just saying thanks for supporting us can't wait to see you when we reopen and I think that yeah. we've had really good feedback from that as well. So I think it's really nice. It's touching. It takes two yeah. seconds. Exactly. I, I agree. We had, um, so just to try and do our little bit to support business where we can, we all, we ordered one of the Father's Day boxes from MasterCard. And when that arrived and we opened it up, there's a beautiful letter in there from MasterCard wishing everyone a really happy Father's Day. And it was all beautifully packed. And it was just a really lovely uh, box of goodies to receive and then from Western Sydney Catering Jai um, did up a beautiful it was the most beautiful seafood platter I've ever had and um, you know that he put a lovely note on there he's texting you all the time so that you know when it's going to arrive it was so okay. fresh it was so good it was so good I had Jai's, uh, Jai's beautiful food for dinner last Tuesday for my birthday um, and I also ordered a beautiful uh, tomahawk from him on the weekend. I'm asking Kurt, you know, he put notice in there. He was really personable about it. Uh, you know, other people had lost orders or didn't get orders put in time, and he still went and made them up for other people, even though it would have stretched him a little bit. He just put the time in and, and did it, and I must say, Vanessa, thank you for putting me on to him because it was so beautiful, the service that he gave. And how was the tomahawk, Adam? It was amazing. I haven't cooked it yet. I haven't cooked it yet, unfortunately. Did you? I was waiting you... to do it with you, Sammy. Yeah. We're, gonna, we're gonna be doing paella away. as well. When are you gonna be coming yeah. to Sydney, Mr. Paul? <laughs> when am I allowed? <laughs> and Martin, we have to get you down here as well and then just organize a great big paella cook up um, mm. at my house. Dr. And we have Dr. everyone Dr. there. Dr. Witch, if we're giving shout outs, I'm uh, just having a little bit of Miguel's beer at the minute. So, so I'm talking about oh, that's beer. beautiful. That, I didn't that, even you know, know Miguel what? was it's doing a beer. One of my favourite, favourite yeah. beers at the minute. Yeah. It's a beautiful beer. It's absolutely sort of stunning. And uh, he's getting, uh, he's got a few out. He's got another one coming out very shortly as well, Ness. Wow. Adam, you're into all those craft beers, eh, hey, Adam? You've always been yes, I love the craft. Yeah. Why are you yeah. calling me up today? Like you're calling oh, no, me. No, 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 I'm just saying. No, no, I'm, <laughs> I'm not taking the piss. I'm just saying that you, you like them. You've always been the cra into the craft beers, you know. No, I like the craft beers. The I'll, tell you what, beers I'll tell you what, Ness. When you when you do open up and I get an invite down there, because we were, I was supposed to be taking the the child bride down to Cairns in middle of October because we've got a bit of an awards due to go to down there. Uh, and then she's had to work, so she, holiday's knackered now. So if the world's open up again and there's an invite down there, I will quite happily join you at Kyoto or Indu or Mexico. Or we'll just do in, all of them. We'll just even, do all of them. We'll have a week. Yeah, we'll do a progressive dinner. Actually, did you uh, see the Facebook fun. memory? Did you see that, Adam? I did, yeah, yeah, yeah. I did. Yes, tonight. And I was actually going to repost the uh, cocktail because it looks so damn good. But, um, yeah, no, and, and you're more than welcome to come and stay at my place, Martin. It's uh, my door's always open. Awesome. Yeah. Clothing optional, man. No, no, cl cl clothing is a, necess a necessity. <laughs> 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 oh god that's a, non, that's a non-negotiable do you know you you were saying how how warm you're gonna have it there at 29 degrees like yes 
That's that's the temperature our cold water comes out the tap. <laughs> I was just going to say, Martin, when you come, just put your keys in the bowl, and there's a pineapple upside down at the front as well. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go on mute for a bit. <laughs> <laughs> So we've got Martin, um, Martin, Martin will come down when sex bows on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you are. You are. Honestly. Oh. Doesn't sex bow normally coincide with the food shows? Like, doesn't it end one day and the food show starts the next? <laughs> well, sometimes all at the same time. <laughs> it was in Brisbane. They were in Brisbane. Yeah, it was next door at the same time. <laughs> Everyone was walking into the wrong one. Oh, I thought this was the food show. Uh, I was I was looking forward to getting down there for food week and then bar week straight after. So we was we were due down there and we got a load of our guys coming down for I think it was like 21st of September was gonna be the um, bar awards. So we were all geared up like like a massive crew, 30, 30 35 people coming down from the MC for oh, yeah. it. Um, oh, that'd be all messy in population. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Most of them. But <laughs> it all got screwed up. But what they did, they've they've made it virtual. So we've taken over one of the bars up here. Um, and we're actually gonna do a like a video link and have the awards in our one of our best bars. So, you know, like positivity out of negativity, and, and as we were saying before, no matter what we do, we we are hospitality, so we just tweak things around to make it better, you know. So we're having our, but we're having the national bar awards in places all over the country this year because of the craziness that we're in. But it came up on my Facebook earlier on. It's it's two years since I've been to Sydney now, you know. Really? Is that yeah, two years? Wow. Yeah, two years really? since I was down there, and we were doing. Uh, I'm not sure if it was Fine Foods or FSA. Um, but I've got pictures came up this morning about setting up the kitchens and stuff when we were doing it on the Sunday, running around like Billio trying to get it all sorted out. It was, I mean, um, it was, was actually, setting. it was actually fine food. Fine foods, wasn't it? Of course it was. I met, I met Minnie on the bloody uh, escalator there, but uh, you, you were setting up upstairs and we were down there. And yeah, the bloody great, great memories. And, if everything opens up and the world gets back to some sense of normality, those memories are going to be in an, for another two years, another five years, another 10 years, which is, which is what's great about how this industry is and how we rebound through adversity. And we will, everybody will come out. Oh, we it. absolutely will. You know, it, it's phenomenal. It's phenomenal. So yeah, I'll share a beer. I'll come down to Sydney. I will be wearing clothes. Uh, and uh, <laughs> the other thing. <laughs> and I'll give you a big bear hug, Martin. <laughs> Mate, and... you'll still have those bloody cow boots on, will you? <laughs> Mate, I well, he has probably not. He probably hasn't worn them a whole lot lately, <laughs> so they probably got. No, I haven't. Yeah, they're probably in fine form. But we've also got Are You OK Day coming up on the 9th of September yeah. as well. Just wanted to put a little, um, a, a little shout out. <laughs> Yeah, regarding Are You OK Day, there's um, there's a lot of information available on their site. Uh, we're also sharing a lot of information through uh, AFAB at the moment. It's um, such a worthwhile cause, you know, it's really important to have those conversations and check in and, and make sure that people really are OK. Vanessa, I completely, completely agree. And at the moment with COVID, Are You OK Day should be sort of every day. Um, so don't just oh, check yeah. in. Your colleagues or your friends on on Thursday check in as regularly as ever, and um, you know um, there's certainly great stuff that Are You OK and AFAB have done. Um, and we had a session with Unilever yesterday about mental health um, uh, with the work and learn lunch. Um, it, it's so important at these times. Social connectivity uh, is the best thing for mental health, and we can't really do it at these times normally. So uh, check in with your friends and your mates, and there's great um, support out there from Beyond Blue and Lifeline. Um, you know, text lines, call lines for anyone who's really struggling. It, it really is a tough time. People are in um, some tough positions. So reach out, check in with everyone as best as you can. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well said, Andrew. Well said, Andrew. Yeah. 
Very well said. Another cause which I thought I'd give a shout out tonight, I'm not too sure if people um, know about it. I was speaking to Karen Doyle today and she said to me, I'm just doing all this walking at the moment. She's walking, 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 walking. And I said, what are you doing? Anyway, she's um, she's doing a, uh, a challenge and it's the better challenge and it's to raise funds for the children um, with cancer. So there's a there's not a lot of support financially when it comes to um, supporting children with cancer and the foundation. So she's doing something amazing and walking uh, 90 kilometers to help raise money for cancer treatments and for amazing. that are kinder, gentler, and more effective. So you know there's there's some really great projects out there at the moment, and um, every little bit helps, even if it's two dollars. I just think you know if you can help with a great cause like that and especially on the back of um the family finding little boy that was missing up in the Hunter Amazing. Valley it was yeah. an incredible story so uh, it was wonderful to see it was such a great outcome I can't imagine anyone in Sydney not tearing up about that like I was oh I just couldn't imagine I couldn't take my eyes away from the tv I was just like glued to it I I was just watching them and, and, you know, see that mother's reaction and you could just identify. And anyway, it was so emotional. And look, regardless of what people have to say and whether they have an opinion about it, no, the little, the little boy's home, the little yeah. boy's safe, and that's all that matters. Yep, I agree. And I'll tell you what, them sales will be up. Did you see the barbecue on the news today? <laughs> yeah. Every, everyone's now everyone's now got to go into isolation. So there was there was a, there was a ton of lamb up there sitting on the table behind the news tonight for that family. So I guarantee they're having the biggest uh, party ever, you know, up there at Putty. So good luck to them, mate, and share the lamb. Share the lamb. Yeah, the lamb. Tell you, advertising line. Good on you. We're actually talking about lamb today. Uh, when I was doing the chat with um, Paul Brown, I don't know if you've um, met Paul or, or, or know of Paul. What an incredible journey he's had. Amazing. I, I, I Amazing. actually can normally like talk and hold a conversation. I'm just like in awe today. I could barely yeah. even like, I didn't want to I'll interrupt him. It was so good. I'll listen to that tonight. He was the um, the the culinary director, if you like, for the His Majesty King Bahrain. Uh, over, yeah, like yeah. incredible. You know, and he, he would, um, you know, he obviously, they didn't have a budget when it came to what the, they cooked for the, for the king. But lamb, Sam, they used to get 60 lamb in just for well, one dinner. Well, Steve, Stephen Lee was good too the other day. I enjoyed that on Friday. Yeah, he's a great guy. Just yeah, had yeah, some really yeah, great, great people. I mean, Josh was fantastic yesterday. Gary was, Johnson a few weeks ago. Was Gary's a incredible. Yeah. It's been yeah. um, Eddie. Eddie tomorrow. Eddie. Eddie. Kofi. Eddie Kofi tomorrow, oh, which would be granddad, awesome. Granddad. Yeah. Granddad. Yeah, that'd be good. That'd you know, good. he's um, you know, what experience has he never had? Like he's worked and he's done everything, legend. and he's yeah. such a nice person. You know, it'll be mm. nice to catch up with him and uh, hear what's been going on in his world. And then, um, yeah. you know, there's it, it, the gifts will just keep on giving, which is great. Yeah. There's some great people coming up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, I've enjoyed it. I, I can't get to all of them, but I try to listen to them um, in the afternoons. And I must say, I haven't, haven't come across a bad one yet. So well done, Vanessa. You know what I mean? It's, it's, you're a very good interviewer too. I think I said it two weeks ago, you know, it's, You've got to be able to ask the questions to get the, the results back, and, and you're very good at doing that. So, yeah, oh, yeah hats off to you. I'm just a sticky beak, like I said. I like to know everyone else's business. <laughs> no, it's very good. Very good. I've, I've, I've tuned into a couple of them up here, and, you know, we haven't got the, you know, I, I mean, we, we're all working and doing, so we're not actually locked in or anything, but I've made a point of tuning into some of them. Yeah, they've been, they've been really cool, Vanessa. You've done a great job there. Thanks. Uh, well, <clears throat> so I what I've point to listen to Paul's one because Paul Brown was Paul's off was the planet. Awesome. He was off the planet. His story of from apprentice to where he is today and his approach to everything, it's it's like it's it's like it just you, you just hold your breath and go like, really? Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's 
It was yeah. like that, wasn't it? I, I couldn't was. believe. I was, just, I was amazed. I like, could not absolute, believe I couldn't, I couldn't the stop experience. <laughs> Oh, I was the same. I was just like, oh, my goodness, I can't even interrupt you. I just am enjoying this <laughs> way too much. Yeah. And um, you've all seen the whole ABBA rebirth. <laughs> pretty exciting. How good is that? It is out pretty morning. exciting. I've got a quick question. Can they still sing? <laughs> well, I don't know, yes, but I'll, I'll, I'll be able to tell you when I go over there and watch them in June next year. <laughs> where do you watch them? Where, where are they playing? They're, they're building their whole new arena. Yeah. So in London. We just booked our tickets. And are you going we, to London, are you? Yes. How good is that? In uh, June next year, we bought tickets, and then we're going to go to Ireland and Scotland and Paris. That's a great time awesome. of the year to be there, too. Great time of the year. So excited. Uh, well, it is or it isn't. June is either really, really great or it's very, very wet. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I've been lucky. Every time I've been there in June, it's been sweltering. Yeah. Mate, you go to Scotland in winter, in summer, sorry, and it's like our winter over here. So yeah. Scotland, no matter what, it's going to be bloody cold. I don't care. Oh, I know. I, don't. I am so excited. You would love it. You would love it. It's just yeah. nice to have something to look forward to. And, and I, the one place that I've always dreamt of um, visiting is Ireland. And Gary's got his uh, <laughs> Avascar. <laughs> yeah, so the one place I've always visited, always just dreamt about visiting is Ireland. And um, we've been watching YouTube, um, to, you know, just tours and, and different things people are doing. And I'll be in touch with you, Jezza, to give me I some. Hope you up, don't and Martin and Amanda. You've all been all over Europe. Mm. So anyway, you haven't been. Huh? Did you say you haven't been? I've never been, never been to Europe. Really? I love it. Mm. Hey, I've, I, you know, people say to me, did you, have you ever, and I was a mum and I just worked. Like we, you know, I used to take the kids away on holidays, but I never got the opportunity to travel. Oh, you'll love it. Geez, you'll absolutely adore it. If you've never been over there, you'll adore it. Depending on where you go, but uh, yeah. Yeah. We have no plans, Jezza. We're going to book our accommodation in London. But other than that, we're just going to um, get a car. We're going to get the train to Paris. But yeah, we're going to um, be incredible. And uh, yeah. we're just going to get a car and uh, drive stuff. wherever we want to go. Yeah. Trains are better. I can take this offline with you, Vanessa, and tell you some easy options. Cars are a bit of a pain. Go to Disneyland, yeah, yeah. Paris. Yeah. I can help you. I can help spend your money on activities and places to stay <laughs> and things to do. I will help you plan. So oh, you can just write out my itinerary for me. You've got a Amanda Fuller travel organiser. Yeah, I can. <laughs> what I dates are you going over, Biggles? What dates are you going over? We're going on the 18th of May. You'll be able to go to see the Trooping of the Colour if you're keen. Uh, well, we actually have um, put that down after you recommended that the other night. So, sure. yes, we're definitely going to do that. We but could be back We're going, there for, we're going work. for a month. We're going to be going for a month. I'll yeah, look after your Irish leg. Don't yeah. worry. Hey? I we said, I'll look after there. your Irish leg. Thanks. Sorry. Sorry, Jerry. Sorry, Sam. Go ahead. And I really we would be, like. We could be back there for work, get you to a, uh, an Australian function in Australia House. Oh, that would be that'd amazing. Be, that'd be awesome. But I yeah. would really like people to give me some ideas on different restaurants to visit while we're over there that um, that they can recommend, and they don't have to be swanky. I just want um, I just want to experience the culture, and I really want to throw myself into the whole Europe um, experience. There's a restaurant. There's a restaurant in Dublin that you get a, Like I went to Paris A and the Bad and Then, and like I've been really blessed when I got to eat. But I went to a restaurant in Dublin called The Greenhouse. <laughs> and it's on Stevens Green. If you ever get an opportunity to go there, you need to go there. It was the Greenhouse. Right there. Cool. Yeah. Some of the best food I've ever had. We'd have to still make sure that a lot of these places in Europe are still open, though. They've done it pretty tough. Yeah, you still but open. I want to go to Ireland and I want to have a beer and I just want to have a great time. And I'm so Don't get excited. A so, so, it's can all warm over there, Sam. <laughs> Bring ice cubes. There's yeah. no warm beer anymore. I never had a warm beer. Uh, 
I, that's such a misnomer, isn't it? Totally. It's like everybody slags us off because we're pom. Right. You're going to go the fat duck? That's such bull. Nah, probably not. Right. I'll give you some great restaurants. I will help you plan. <laughs> you, can go to the, you can go to the pie room in the Rosewood Hotel. they got like a, it's the amazing pies that they make in this hotel. Oh, really? And, and then there's a little, there's like a little glass hatch, which is out of the pie room. And some of, it's some of the best pies you can ever get anywhere in the world. Amazing stuff. Wow. John Preston's restaurant over in London's getting hit, rave reviews as well. Pacific, so. I'll tell Where's you that? what, I, I've, and, and you might know it, Amanda, I went to um, the seashell of Listen Grove to get the fish and chips there. Oh, that's there? where that's I'm definitely best. going, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. unreal. Unreal. They do have the curry sauce and all that. Out of control, got recommended to me when I was over there by a colleague that, 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 that works in London. I think all the fish and chip shops are only frequented by like travelers. I don't travelers. I don't ever remember going to a I mean I get some chips occasionally, but I could count on one hand the amount of fish and chips I had, except for in my restaurants. That's another warm beer fad thing, I think. Do you agree? No, nah, but they had all the locals there when I went on a Friday night. It was just out of control. All the families uh, coming home from work. I remember, the, I remember the going to Zach's in Nantwich. So there was there was an old Greek Cypriot that had a great chippy. In in our my old hometown of Nantwich, and yeah, he did good. He did good fish and chips. But I agree with you. It's like you know Fridays, you don't just go down and get fish and chips in newspaper. Call blimey, love a duck, and all that. That's, <laughs> that's, that's hey, awesome. I, I went to Blackpool, and fish and chips is very popular in Blackpool, one of the worst oh. seaside towns in Europe. <laughs> There's nothing <laughs> else in Blackpool to get. But <laughs> 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 no, 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 Welks out of the bloody um, fun fair. You got those little. Remember those little horrible pots of plastic cockle and Welks. Well, the little cray tails, or yeah, like the yeah. wet with the with the wooden <laughs> fork. Yeah, those are the ones. From the caravan on the beach, at, well, on the rocks in Brighton. Mm. Bloody awful. Absolutely. The wrinkles. <laughs> wrinkles and whelks, yeah. <laughs> so oh, I'll be doing time. my little Facebook Live while I'm over there and you can all join him. Oh, I remember that place. Oh, yes, I remember that place. <laughs> There'll be other concerts. They do heaps of live stuff over summer. Heaps. Yeah. Yeah, we um. Well, that that's what we were looking at. But I'm just so stoked to be able to see Abba. I don't care if they're 75. I reckon they don't need to move. They just need to sing. <laughs> yeah. I remember yeah. seeing Ozzy Osbourne in uh, Adelaide, and I'd like, I like I miss Black Sabbath, and he, they came over to Adelaide, and I went to see him, and yeah, no, he should have retired. <laughs> Can I tell you, Neil Diamond was life changing. It was the best concert. That and Paul McCartney were the two best concerts that I have ever been to. And Neil Diamond did I not agree even. With Neil Diamond, Neil Diamond did yeah. not even have to move, mate. That guy, I, I, I don't even get emotional very often. There were singers, but I got emotional with him. He was incredible. MC Hammer, nineteen eighty nine. Yeah. <laughs> Bad boy Slim, yeah. Yeah. You can anyway, see dog next year. Okay. So we should do a Facebook karaoke next week, right? You know, songs. No, we shouldn't. No, we shouldn't, Martin. <laughs> no, we shouldn't. All right, okay, you got a bar. <laughs> we'll do that when you come to my place, and we'll do it around the paella. Oh, geez, yeah. <laughs> paella, as Adam would paella, correct me. Paella. <laughs> All right, guys, listen, have an amazing week. Um, missing you all very much. Thank you, everyone, that's checked in. And, um, you know, if if you just reach out, make sure that uh, your colleagues are all good. Remember, are you okay, Day? And, and lots of love to you all. Thanks, Ness. Bye. 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 Bye.